Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my newest members, Bang Larson. Thank you for becoming a member and supporting the channel. Members are giving shout outs in my videos. You can easily become a member by clicking the join button. So when I searched up Bang Larson, I found uh, that he's a professor. I'm not sure if this is the case. Please let me know. All right. So in this video, we're going to be evaluating a function f at 1. We're given f of x plus 1 over x equals x to the power 65 plus 1 over, six, uh, 1 over x to the power 65. And we're, we are going to evaluate f of 1. I'll be presenting three methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to start by setting x plus 1 over x, and that should be the start of every method. We want to make what's inside the parentheses equal to 1. So it makes sense if we set it equal to 1, but then we'll proceed in different ways. From here, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. Obviously, x does not equal 0. So we get x squared plus 1 equals x. And I can write this as x squared equals x minus 1. This is going to be our key to the kingdom. So let's go ahead and save it. So everywhere I see x squared, I'm going to replace it with x minus 1. So I want to get to the 65th power, and I notice that it's one more than a power of 2, which is x to the power 64. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to evaluate x to the 4th by squaring x squared. And since x squared is x minus 1, that's going to give me x squared minus 2 x plus 1. But now I can always replace x squared with x minus 1. That's going to give me x minus 1 minus 2 x plus 1. And when I cancel out the 1s, it's going to give me negative x. This means x to the 4th can be written as negative x when x squared is x minus 1. Awesome. Let's continue this process to find out x to the 8th. So for that, I will square x to the 4th power, but x to the 4th can be written as negative x. When I square negative x, it becomes x squared, and x squared can be replaced with x minus 1 all the time, right? So x to the 8th, in other words, can be written as x minus 1. Awesome. Let's proceed in this manner, but notice that a pattern is emerging. To find out x to the power 16, I'm going to take x to the 8th and square it, but x to the 8th can be written as x minus 1, so I'll square it. And that's going to give me pretty much the same thing as before. This 1 and x squared can be replaced. So we basically repeat the process and it ends up giving us negative x. So to keep a long story short, x to the power 16 is negative x. x to the power 32 is going to be x minus 1, so on and so forth. So in order, instead of repeating this procedure over and over, we can safely say that, hey, x to the 32 is going to be x to the power 16 squared, which is x squared, and that's x minus 1. And for x to the power 64, we can just square this, and that's going to give us x minus 1 squared. And as you know, it is equal to negative x. So x to the power 64 is negative x. This is what I was trying to reach. Now, I do need the 65th power, but that can easily be obtained. I can just go ahead and, you know, multiply. To find x to the power 65, I can multiply x to the 64 times x. But now notice that x to the power 64 can be written as negative x. So if I replace, that gives me negative x squared. And remember, x squared can always be replaced with x minus 1. So the opposite of that would, would be 1 minus x. Or you can write it as negative x plus 1 if you want. So x to the power 65 can be written as 1 minus x. This is really cool because now in my expression I have x to the power 65 plus 1 over x to the power 65, which can be replaced with 1 minus x plus 1 over 1 minus x. And now I can make a common denominator. 1 minus x times 1 minus x is 1 minus x squared. I can write it like this. And then plus 1 divided by 1 minus x. But 1 minus quantity, 1 minus x quantity squared is 1 minus 2x plus x squared. With the addition of the other one, it becomes 2 minus 2x plus x squared divided by 1 minus x. And then now x squared can be replaced with x minus 1. Remember, we were able to replace it all the time. So I'm going to replace x squared with x minus 1. 
and this is going to give me 1 minus x over 1 minus x, which is 1. So the answer is 1, which is kind of weird, right? This gigantic expression turns into 1, but that is the case. So I know some of you are finding this method super duper long. That's why I have the second method and the third method for you guys who are not that patient. So our second method um, depends on a total different approach. I'm going to be using complex numbers for this. I hope you like them. If not, start liking them because they are cool. So from, uh, what is it called? Quadratic formula. Yeah, that's what it is. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 1 minus 4. That's going to give us negative 3. So the square root of negative 3 can be written as, you know, uh, square root of 3i with the plus minus sign because there are two square roots. Uh, so equality wouldn't really make sense. But with the plus minus sign here, it would make sense. So we can write the solutions as 1 plus minus square root of 3 times i divided by 2. i is the imaginary number or the imaginary unit whose square equals negative 1. All right. So we got the x values values there are two x values how am i gonna evaluate this single expression with two different x values you want to use both no it doesn't matter trust me it's going to give you the same answer and that, and that can be verified with uh, the first method we only got one answer so let's just use the positive one doesn't that make more sense okay so let's go ahead and replace x with one plus root three i over two but we're not going to do the following we're not just going to take this and raise it to the 65th power you can if you want but you're going to use the binomial theorem and good luck with that, right? That's going to have 66 terms. I don't want to do it. I want to use, turn this into trigonometric form, trigonometric form or polar form. So let's go ahead and write the x this way. 1 half plus root 3 over 2i. And notice that 1 half is cosine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. And root 3 over 2 is sine of pi over 3. Awesome. And Obviously, the modulus here is 1. If you check that 1 half squared plus root 3 over 2 squared equals 1. So I don't need to write anything in front of this expression. I know some people had an issue when I didn't emphasize that. So I'm emphasizing that the modulus of this complex number is 1. So I don't need to write it. Awesome. Now, I have the x in polar form and I'm going to use, I can never pronounce that, the Moa or the Moiver formula. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and raise x to the 65th power. How do you raise something in trigonometric form or polar form to a power? Easy. You just multiply the argument, the angle, the alpha, whatever, multiply by that number. So it's just going to be cosine of 65 pi over 3 plus i sine 65 pi over 3. That's fairly easy, right? It's a really cool shortcut. Avoids definitely the binomial theorem at 66 terms. That's a huge economy there. So, what is 6 to 5 pi over 3? That's way too large, like 20 something pi. Mm. Let's take out multiples of 2 pi, and you can easily do the following 6 to 5 pi over 3 is 60 pi plus 5 pi over 3. And this part is just going to be 20 pi, which is 2 times, well, 10 times 2 pi. I don't care about it. So, with, this can be written as 5 pi over 3. They're not equal, but they're equivalent, anyways. So, my x to the power 6 to 5 becomes then cosine of. 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. Let's take a look at the trigonometric values of 5 pi over 3, which is the same as 300 degrees. So it's kind of something like this. If you look at the x and the y's, uh, its cosine is going to be 1 half, which is positive, right? But its not sine is going to be negative root 3 over 2. So. It is, this is x to the 65th. And again, the modulus is 1. So if you invert it, you're going to get the kind of like the reciprocal. So their product needs to be 1. So it's just going to be the conjugate. Because if you multiply these, you're going to get 1. Make sense? I hope it does. So we're, we're just going to add them. And addition is super duper easy. These guys cancel out. And we end up with x to the power 65 plus 1 over x to the power 65. And that equals one and that gives us the answer again one more time and now let's talk about let's talk about the third method for those of you who are even impatient with this second method okay for my sec uh, third method i'm going to consider this quadratic equation but instead of isolating x squared which i can do definitely right x squared can be written as x minus one i'm going to do the following multiply both sides by x plus one this is a neat trick that's used very often 
So don't say, hey, where does this come from out of the blue? We use this very often. So, but notice that I'm multiplying by something extra. So I don't want to bring in extraneous roots. So I want to make sure I take note that x does not equal negative 1. Okay, I'll pay attention to that, hopefully. So from here we get x cubed plus 1 equals 0 from sum of two cubes formula, which means x cubed can be written as negative 1. This is a huge improvement over x squared equals x minus 1 because in the first method, remember, we had to keep squaring to get to the 64th power. But this time, we're going to get there much faster. So let's go ahead and take a look at the following. x to the 65 can be written as x to the power 3 to the power 21, which gives us x to the power 63. I just need to multiply by x squared. Uh-oh, that comes up again, but that's okay. x cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power 21 is negative 1, so this is equivalent to negative x squared. But x squared is x minus 1, so negative x squared is 1 minus x, which is the opposite of x minus 1. So now, again, with the, just like the first method, right, I can go ahead and replace x to the 65th with 1 minus x, and the other one was with 1 over 1 minus x, making a common denominator, you're going to get the same thing, 2 minus 2x plus x squared over 1 minus x, replace the x squared with x minus 1, you're going to get x minus, no, not x minus 1, you're going to get 1 minus x over 1 minus x, and that's going to be 1, one more time, All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.